You see, the year was 2013, and like a lot of you, I was a much different man than the one you see standing in front of you right now. You see, I couldn't grow quite as much facial hair, not that I can grow a lot right now. For some reason, I thought that the Party Rock anthem was like one of the best songs ever written, and the biggest change actually happened due to this thing called a group chat. Group chat was this really new technology that I hadn't really heard of yet, where you could text multiple numbers on your phones. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And I was in a group chat with a couple of other young adults that I had met at my job over the summer, and I remember some Someone in the group chat started his text with, what are you guys doing right now? And I'll never forget one of the girls in said group chat, she responded specifically with, I'm sitting in my room alone, just hanging out, listening to John Mayer. And I remember thinking to myself in the moment, what the heck is a John Mayer? You see, I hadn't really played guitar before and I had no frame of reference as to who he might be or why people might like his musical ability. And what I didn't know is that within the next year, due to a friend giving me a Spotify playlist with one of the songs that you'll see in a second, that Man and his guitar playing would become the catalyst for a lot of the passions that I have today. And his guitar playing would teach me so much through a specific set of riffs that all kind of helped form and shape my guitar playing over the years. So that begs the question, what were those riffs? Mike, you're starting with your body as a wonderland? What is wrong with you? One, I'm a huge defender of this song. I think that it is a very well-written pop song and I think it gets so much hate for literally just dumb reasons. I think that this riff specifically, especially for me in my younger days, this song was really the first time I heard like the percussive slap technique that he uses on the two and four to like mimic the snare drum. And if you're ever gonna learn this, starts with learning this. I don't think I've ever had a, a song understand me as much in what I was trying to do after high school. This song taught me so much about rhythmic variation, but also in a lot of John Mayer's younger days and a lot of his earlier works, you can see that he's not just doing four chord songs, like a lot of the acoustic stuff I was learning at the time. It, I mean, this is really the song that taught me that borrowing chords from other keys isn't just for jazz players. Three by five. So I remember specifically, my best friend was teaching me guitar at home during winter break of my freshman year of college. And he tells me that his favorite John Mayer song of all time is three by five. So I was like, I have to learn this once I get up to speed. And I had one of my friends back at college actually try to explain it to me because I had never played anything with sort of a swung rhythm before. Everything I played had been like straight Daughtry riffs. So when I had gotten to this, It made no sense at all to me. I had no sense of rhythm. I wasn't getting it for so long and he was so angry with me whilst teaching it to me that he actually called in one of my friends who wasn't a guitar player and he said, Mike, literally this is the easiest thing in the world. And he had my friend who wasn't a guitar player come and play it in front of me and he goes, you see, even he can play it and he's not even a guitar player. I don't think I've ever felt so bad in my entire life. And I don't think I've ever not understood anything more on the guitar than a swung rhythm. All right, so City Love. City Love was the riff that taught me about double stops. And as a blues player, you cannot understate the importance of using double stops, whether that's in like a Hendrix fashion or in like a Corey Wong fashion with like funky stuff. But also even going deeper into the song, not just that riff, this was one of the first songs that really taught me about soloing and mixing the major and minor pentatonic.
All right, so we've come to Clarity, which is one of my three favorite Mayer songs ever written in the history of this known universe. And what Clarity taught me specifically is about ambiguity in songwriting. You see, Clarity has a lot of lyrics that don't necessarily make the most sense. But from what I've heard John say in interviews, the song is more about a feeling than anything. And when you think about it in those terms, it's just unbelievable. And harmonically wise, even though I didn't really know anything Thing about music theory or why the chord was what it was, this was one of the first songs ever where I used the major ninth shape. And being a lover of Neo Soul, that chord is super important. I mean, are you at all surprised? Could we even make a John Mayer fan list without having slow dancing on there? The unique thing about slow dancing was one, it was actually the first John Mayer song I ever really remember listening to. My friend in college gave me a playlist, a Spotify playlist, that had a bunch of songs and slow dancing was the one that definitively stood out the most. The thing that it taught me specifically was using the full range of the pentatonic when it comes to writing riffs. That it's more than just a scale where people abuse single note solos. You've got single notes, you've got double stops and you've got embellishments and inversions and I think that's definitely part of what makes the song so special for guitar players and it explains a little bit of why it's become probably one of the more overplayed riffs of all time but to me it never gets old and I'll always have that sentimental place in my heart for it being really the first John Mayer song that I ever listened to I don't trust myself. I don't really trust myself fully explaining how much I love this song, but I'll try. This is the first Where the Light Is song that I ever listened to really after slow dancing. The thing that this taught me was really about dynamics and songwriting. You see this entire song basically has one chord progression other than one brief part during the bridge. And he has to keep the entire thing interesting, keep it consistently moving and flowing and feeling like it's building with that one chord progression, that A minor to C, to F. He does it beautifully and just knowing a little bit about songwriting, you're always taught during the chorus, you gotta switch something up. You gotta switch up the rhythm. You gotta have complete new chords, but he's able to keep those same chords and still keep the song so interesting and so moving. All right, Belief has a special place in my heart because it's one of the first songs that I learned with a more intermediate picking pattern. It wasn't just straight up and down arpeggios. But it also taught me about like knowing chord structures and being able to use them in different variations. And more specifically and more embarrassingly, I remember so clearly the day I was learning it in my college dorm room. And one of the guys from across the hall, he had heard me all night. The next morning he actually came up to me and he was a great guitar player and he said, you were learning belief last night. And I said, yes, I was. And I'll never forget, he goes, it sounded really bad, Michael. And I went, yeah, I know. Vultures. Interestingly enough, before I really got into like the funky thing and the groove thing, I didn't really get the hype behind vultures. But then once I really started learning more about funk playing, I was like, okay, this thing has some serious groove. And you might be like, Mike, why do you have a bass? Like we're talking about all the stuff you learn on guitar. Well, simply because of this. What Vultures taught me about guitar is how to actually play with a bass player and how to really write bass riffs that complement guitar players and how to write guitar riffs that complement bass playing. It was one of the very first times that I really noticed how different bass line can be from an actual riff and how well they can work together. Because while John's doing that thing up high, Pino, an absolute genius, is playing this groove right here. I think it's super important for guitar players not just to learn how to play with bass players, but how to learn how specifically your favorite players play with their bass players and how John Mayer plays and complements with his bass player, Pino Palladino, who is an actual genius. And 
finally, Assassin. Not just specifically Assassin, which is one of my seven or eight favorite John Mayer songs that I really, really, really wish he would play live one of these days, but the acoustic version from Berkeley, where he's talking about what makes his songwriting so special. And there is just something about that groove, hearing it for the first time, those chords. Much like with clarity in the major ninth chords, this was my first time really learning about the sus2 chord shape. A shape that I think is awesome that's actually used in one of my favorite songs of the last five years, Circle the Drain by Soccer Mommy. So obviously those aren't all of the John Mayer songs that I've ever tried to learn in my life. And I think I've learned something new about the guitar and about specifically how to get better at playing with every song I learned. I wish I could take the time, but it would literally take hours to go through every single Mayer song to tell you about how Gravity taught me that all of my notes that I was bending were out of tune or how Neon taught me that it's okay to want to quit something because you're really bad at it. But those were the 10 songs that really stuck out to me specifically. I wanna know what you think. What are the John Mayer riffs that taught you to play the guitar and what did they teach you? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I've been wanting to do more, not necessarily lesson videos, but more of these videos where I just talk about like my journey as a guitar player and seeing like what songs taught me what different things. Let me know in the comments, what other artists would you like this list with? Cause I think these videos are super fun. But as always, make sure to check out the links in the description if you wanna know more about the guitars. Like and subscribe if you had a good time and most important of all, most importantly, have a fantastic day. Danny, 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 Danny.